At this point, we're moving from measuring objects to manufacturing or building objects. When manufacturing something, we're often supplied with the desired dimensions. And along with these dimensions, sometimes we're also supplied the tolerance for those given dimensions. How close do we have to get to the provided dimensions? That is, how much wiggle room do we have when building this item? And here's a quick memory assist. The bigger the tolerance, the more you'll tolerate. If you're cutting boards for an old shed, you may allow a large tolerance. You may tolerate boards being cut a centimeter short or a centimeter long without worrying about it much. You have a fairly large tolerance. On the other hand, if you're making a part for NASA, the tolerance might be very small. They can't tolerate much for variation in a device that costs millions to get into orbit. There's very little room for error. Low tolerance. So let's look at how designers communicate tolerance. You'll find it very similar to reporting uncertainty in measurements. Designers report the desired dimensions along with the tolerances like this. 3.2 meters plus or minus 0.1 meters. So we say that the 3.2 meters is our nominal value. That's the dimension we're aiming for. That's our goal. The 0.1 meter is our tolerance, indicating what we'll tolerate. So let's explain the plus minus here again. The whole thing tells us that we would allow or tolerate a minimum dimension of 3.2 meters minus 0.1 meters or 3.1 meters. Also, we would allow or tolerate a maximum dimension of 3.2 plus 0.1 meters or 3.3 meters. So, our allowable outcomes includes anything between 3.1 and 3.3 meters. And our nominal value in this case was 3.2 meters, right in the middle of our range here. So now, we're familiar with the most common way of reporting a dimension with tolerances. Given that, there are a few variations that can show up, and we'll address those in our practice problems.